Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mastering GLSL in Touch Designer. My name is Lake Heckman, and I'm a new media artist exploring how technology can alter human perception and change how we interact with each other um, in spaces. So I do this primarily through building custom software that viewers experience through interactive installations, which I'm fortunate enough to be able to show uh, at exhibitions around the world. This one uh, is showing in China until March 2025. Uh, these pieces were exhibited during our Basel Miami last year. This piece showed in New York in early 2023. And uh, this is a weather reactive facade that is a permanent installation in Medellin, Colombia. So all of these works I've created using techniques that I'm going through in this course. And it brings me a lot of joy to be able to share them with everyone. So thank you for following along. Today's lesson is feedback loops with GLSL in Touch Designer. Uh, really starting to get into the good stuff now. And I'm happy to say that today there are very, very few slides uh, because I think everyone knows what feedback loops are. Uh, I would be pretty shocked if anybody is at this point uh, in their Touch Designer progression without understanding what a feedback loop is and without falling in love with it. So. What is a feedback loop? A feedback loop is a setup, a really a system structure that's going to allow a shader or any system to read its own output as its input for the next frame, which introduces a path dependency and lets us have uh, really nice evolving animations and simulations. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Um, so what are some examples? Uh, some examples are pixel sorting, displacement mapping, and growth solving, among many, many, many others. Uh, so these are three we're going to look at today and build from scratch. So pixel sorting, I will be sorting pixels by a given metric, e.g. using luminance or color, check its neighbors, uh, and then swaps places with its neighbors if um, it's out of order based on that sort metric. Displacement mapping is uh, kind of taking the domain manipulation techniques that we talked about in earlier lessons and applying them via feedback loop in a way to deform uh, a shape from an input texture. And then finally, a growth solver uh, will use a feedback loop to accumulate a texture. Uh, for example, every time uh, our shader calculates, every frame, we'll take a look. If a pixel is white, it will stay white. Uh, otherwise, it will become white with some probability uh, based on its neighborhood. So these are three pretty simple examples of feedback loops, and we're going to go through all of them starting immediately. So here's an example of uh, two of the, the effects that we're going to be building today. Before I get into this uh, too much in the technical stuff, I will say that from here on out, the video is going to be for my Patreon subscribers only. So if you want to follow along, uh, check out my Patreon, hit subscribe. You can get the project files and full video for this lesson, as well as the solutions to all of these exercises and uh, access to all of the other tutorials that I have uh, created over the years, which include lots more on GLSL, a lot of touch designer general knowledge, as well as some other stuff, uh, new media art specific. Um, so go check that out, subscribe, follow along, and pick up where you left off. For everyone who's already a subscriber, thank you very much for that support. As I've said before, it really does mean so much to me. And now we can just get going and start looking at some of these examples. <clears throat> 